Alright, let's play this game. Can't play it with a controller, so I can put the controller down. Let me restart. The best dinosaur. So, this is a game called The Best Dinosaur. I made it for Luden Dare something something. Um, the theme was evolution. Um, and, let me move the mouse. And I thought that most of the games were going to be programmer wanky games, so I decided to make a silly joke game, because that's the kind of shit I like to do. Um, so, uh, the first level, I worked quite hard to make sure that, wait, let me restart again. The I'm going to do dev commentary while I do this. So, okay. Um, so, you know, controls are left, right, and Z, and I wanted to make sure that you were, uh, you had instantly, you know, it was clear, and like, you can't get past this thing without having worked out that you have to press right and Z to jump, and that you can jump and move at the same time, that kind of thing, you know? Um, I also wanted to put danger immediately, and it's got blood on it, so you can tell that it's bad, and, you know, if you get killed, then you get killed. That's... I'm going to explain that in a best second. Dinosaur. If you press restart, then the sound keeps playing, because I'm a very good programmer. Um, okay. So there's danger immediately, you see the, the lava bubbling, you see the uh, spikes with blood on, you can tell that they're bad, you can tell that they're, uh, you know, you don't want to hit them. Then it's just, you know, very simple platforming. And then here I've got down and dead, and here's a little thing that happened, is that, so so if you die, what happens is you go to the next level and you devolve, um, but if you die on this level and you go to the next level, then it's possible that you won't have seen this down and said, I can do confetti mode, Tina. Stop it. <laughs> you can get to a point where you need to know how to do down and Z to duck through the platforms without having seen this. So I had to put down and Z in the start of a later level um, because I didn't expect people to not be as good as, at games as I am. Um, that's kind of the major problem with this game at all is that uh, I kind of didn't think about people who aren't didn't make the game and aren't obviously very good. Uh, Alright, so when you hit the nest, which the level like kind of leads you to, there's like no other path in this first level. Um, and it kind of like circles around. And when you're up... Did, was that in this level? Oh, I guess if you jump up, then you'll see it. And if you like jumped up here, you would see that it's something, but you can't get to it. Yeah, man, I thought a lot of things through when I made this game. Anyway, yeah, you, uh, so you get the confetti, Jordan will say yay, yay! then you evolve, um, the, the clock ticking sound, I'm actually really, that was a bunch of clocks ticking from, uh, free sound that I, like, merged together in Audacity. Kids cheering is just, uh, you know, kids cheering or free sound. Um, so yeah, this level... I uh, should have talked about it more at the start. So so yeah, there's that spiky bit up there that's like, ah, you don't wanna don't wanna jump there, so you jump down um the like this bit here and this bit here like guide your eyes that there's it there's safe ground down. But then this is here in case you're like trying to be super sneaky or something and you try and oh Yeah, and you can also jump over it, as Tina says. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is the point where... So I just lost that level, so I devolved back to the first form. I will, I will play through the whole thing talking about it, and then I'll try and play through it and beat it. Um, so yeah, this is the level where, at first, this down and Z thing wasn't here. So you could theoretically get to this level, because you just skip ahead when you die, you could theoretically get to this level without, um, without finding out that down and Z get you to the platform, so I had to put that there to make sure. But anyway, you just press down Z and just go straight through that. Easy peasy. Then there's just a bunch of spikes around. Like, in the first few levels, I'm just, like, amping up the difficulty a little bit, just adding more spikes, more lava pits. And also this one, I wanted to have the eggs clearly visible from the start, but there's, like, a circuitous path to get to it, which I thought was a bit fun. Yeah! I was quite pleased with the way the confetti turned out. Um, okay, so here we got the meteors introduced. They make sounds. 
I made that sound with my mouth, like a lot of the sounds in this game. Um, so yeah, I wanted that to, it to be like, you can't go through here, you have to go up here, but look at this thing, and like, like have it be impossible to get to the meteor before you uh, noticed that it was falling down. And that's what also why it makes a sound, is because uh, if it didn't make a sound then you might just miss it, and that would be uh, annoying. So anyway, uh, these are the easy meteors. Um, yeah, so that one's got spikes there as well, so you've got to jump over it and then... Blah blah blah. Um, the meteors don't actually start making sounds until you see them on your screen. Until you're like in the point where the spawner of the meteors is in your screen's view. But if you... Uh, is the stream okay? It seems to be jumpy. Um, um, but it doesn't stop when it leaves the screen, which means that like in this level it's just like... Which is something that annoys me now when I play it. But anyway... Okay, stream is fine apparently. So yeah, you evolve very like minor little additions every time you um, beat the thing. So yeah, visual language. I made it made sure that every uh, so the the aim was to have at every point where a meteor could land, you'd have this burn mark, um, which is true mostly. There are a couple points that I missed, and I regret that really badly because that's something I really wanted to uh, to make sure. I didn't screw up on because I thought it was very important to make sure that danger zones are clearly marked as danger zones. Um, obviously the evolution path is a uh, fictional. This isn't the way evolution worked. Oh, God. I hate that level. Yeah, so then you go back. It's so harsh. This game's really harsh. You don't even stay on the same one. So this one, you start you can actually, um, top secret, um, okay, what you can do is you can jump over the top of that thing and skip most of that level, uh, but obviously you can't see the homing, um, meteor if you do that, but it is, uh, possible, so, you know, try that speedrunners. This is a difficult level. Not now, but if I had got further, then my hitbox would be bigger. <laughs> uh, as Critical Brit says in chat, top secret, tweens to death. Oh man, I just got stuck in the wall. Oh, that's terrible. This game's so bad. I don't know why anyone likes this game. I had to make it so that if you got to the, uh, got to the egg, then you still beat the level even if you died after you got to the egg, because that was a thing that happened a lot. Oh, see this game's just so busted. So busted in so many ways. So this is the bit where there's parts where, so there should be a burn mark here and here, because you can get hit there. Um, oh god. Um, I think, and maybe up there as well. I don't know, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, maybe not, I don't know. But yeah, I wanted that. I wanted it to be so that all the places where you couldn't get hit were without black marks on, so that you'd have an idea of where's safe. But I fucked up because you can get hit here. I think if you're on the edge, yeah. So you know that's a mistake on my part. Um, yeah. And that was the last level, which combines all the lessons you've learned from the previous levels in theory. So you actually can't move left on this level. Oh, you can. You just can't move left from your starting position. There's an invisible wall here. You can't... You can't... That's deliberate. You also can't... There's an invisible wall on the right as well, so you can't jump over the... Uh, jump over the egg. The eggs. Um, so, this is the last level. I thought of this joke before I thought of anything else. I now regret the inevitability text. I think it's not as funny as it could be. I think it's too um, on the nose. Um, this is not the best dinosaur. This is, well, okay, I'll, I'll, when I get to the good ending, I will explain why this ending exists. Um, okay, 
So let's reset. The best dinosaur. Let's go. This time for real. Not gonna die once. Gonna get to the ending. I really like the way the first lizard looks. It's my favourite. Um, oh god, look at it. It's so cute and like little. I want to remind everybody that I did make this game in a weekend, so, you know, all problems are, uh, are time's fault. The time demon is the cause of everyone's woes. Yeah, so you can jump over that. Um, I just didn't do it again, um, because I forgot to. Uh, yeah, I deliberately, in this game and in Power Struggle, I deliberately put in a couple little tricks where if you are frustrated and you want to, like, speed through it, you totally can. Um... Oh yeah, I like this level. I like this level a lot. Um, I did, initially I wanted uh, everything to look realistic, or, you know, semi-realistic, so that the like branches would come out in ways that they actually could come out, but then I didn't have time to make like a fat branch, so this is just a tree trunk in the middle of the air, which, uh, you know, I don't like now, but um, what was I going to do? It's a weekend. Yeah! So yeah, then you get the spike on your tail. Down a Z through that. Jump, 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 jump. Yeah, I think there are two types of people in this world. There are people that don't jump in this, and uh, there are people that are cool. Jump, 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 jump. Um, you gotta, you know, test your newly evolved back strength. Jump over that. Uh, I like that blind jump, even though it's a bit um, probably, probably a game dev faux pas to have a blind jump, but you've seen it. Like, you'd, I made you walk past it, so you've seen that there's lava there, so you have to uh, you have to know that there's lava that you got to jump over. It's probably... Um... <laughs> Tina asks if I do jam game jams just so no one can complain about my mistakes. <laughs> uh, I do game jams because it's the only way I can finish a fucking project. Um... <laughs> With an extremely strict time limit. Uh, anyway. Yeah, this is easy. This level's too easy, probably. Um, nah, that level's fine. That level's not too easy. I'm just joking. <laughs> see, see, uh, Power Struggle, even more so than this, I, there, I can just see every single problem with it, and it's so... But I also know exactly, I, like, I knew the problems while I was making it, and I knew that they were there. I just didn't have time to implement them. I literally just put that game out the door the uh, the moment that uh, the moment that I had to leave for work. I, like, yeah, I had, like, three things to do at once, and one of them was upload that game. Oh, God, it was a nightmare. I was, like, putting my shirt on and sending a text, and anyway, pay attention. This is a hard level. I really don't like this level. I think this level's a uh, shitty. Oh, damn it! Okay. The best dinosaur. This time for real. This time for real. <laughs> um. So, just so you know, I am gonna keep restarting this until I beat it. Um. So, if that's gonna drive you crazy. I'm sorry. So yeah, there's the little shortcut there, which... Oh god, I am glad I put that in. That's so cool of me. See, I think this game's pretty great. I think I think the level design I did in this, pretty stellar. I mean, not to toot my own too much, but I think it's really cool. I think I did a lot of things right for my first, like, first real platformer. Jump, 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 jump. So yeah, you see the lava there, and then, like, I wasn't really thinking about the, um... The camera just like follows you. You just stay in the middle. As soon as you, as soon as you move out your starting position and you get to a point where you can be in the middle, it like obviously doesn't go outside the edges of the uh, room, but it it follows you. You just stay in the center of it. So I didn't really think about the camera positioning too much, but I do love how that blind jump works. I think it's I think it's cool because all you need to do is pay attention and remember. Um, yeah. So what this, um, initially, this, this bit here was going to all be blackened as if there was just like a giant meteor that went in there, and then I decided that the, um, the visual language of the black parts where meteors hit was more important, but that's why there's this big dip in here, like a meteor smashed it. 
Um, yeah. Um, the reason that the text goes across saying millions of years in a single moment is because nobody can understand the weird bullshit that I put on my voice. It says millions of years in a single moment. I quite like this level. I think I think it does um, it does kind of bring to light that the gravity is totally busted because you fall faster than the meteors. Um, but I think it's cool. I like that level. I like the uh, the concept of that level. <sighs> this level's fucked up though. This level's too difficult. What? Yeah, there we go. All right. Now it's easy. That's my favourite evolution, the like uh, evolution transition rather. I love the these ending ones. So, am I gonna do the jammy secret way? Yeah. Yeah. See that? Beautiful. You you, you can skip the whole level, and then you got the cigarette, and the cigarette is why. The cigarette is why this level is so difficult. Uh, because. I was new to programming. I was new to lots of things. I was new to programming a platform out. So you see the um, you see where I'm hitting into the ball here. The end of the cigarette is where the hitbox ends, which means that my hitbox is three pixels longer than it was as the last evolution. Like my arms would be what hits the wall before, uh, which <laughs> which means that this level is three pixels more difficult than it should be. Um, yeah, this level's really fucked up. So that's the reason that there's all these like walls in midair is because it was impossible to stop without getting hit by meteors at these points, so you needed a wall to hit yourself against. But then you've got this one here, where there isn't a wall, because there had to be... Because if you're doing a level like this, there has to be one where there's only one spot you can stand. That's like the whole, why would you bother making this level if you didn't do that? But if there was a rock here, then it would stop a meteor, so, you know. I can do it, but you know, I did make it. Oh, I don't know, I like, I like it as a level. I think it's cool. This is the best. Ugh, uh, oh, that skateboard just pops up under you. So terrible. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, so uh, as Tina points out, in the, um, in the like time stream that comes up when you're evolving, um, it's just like a bunch of you know sprites of uh, like a laser animating really quickly. Basically, um, mostly they just have squiggles, but um, one of them, one of the frames says time in big uh, massive letters, and another of the frames says uh, has a bunch of skulls in it. Um, okay. Oof. Oh, God. Alright. This level's too hard. Well, this is the last level. Yeah. See, I, I really regret not having the black mark there, but I just didn't know. I didn't know that was a place you could get hit until I saw Martin streaming it. Oof, God. Okay. I think you can probably get hit here as well. Um, okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Um, also in the um, the time demon's clock around the time demon's neck, it's mostly just uh, you know a clock face swinging around at random. Then one of the frames has a skull in it, which is really cool. I I actually love the time demon animation. It's one of my favourite sprites I've ever done. Oh no! Oh yes! Okay. So here we go. This is the good ending. This is this is my favourite joke in this whole game. This is the best. This is so funny to me. This, this, what's about to happen is why I made this game. This is the, this is the joke that spawned this entire game. I knew that the first time if you beat it without uh, getting every level, then it would just, you'd just get smashed by a giant meteor. And if you did beat every level, then this would happen. Wow, you are the best dinosaur. And then you, uh, you unlock confetti mode. Oh, you unlock the secret code for confetti mode. 
code art most audio by me <laughs> and then there's a bunch of a uh, bunch of free sound uh oh yeah and testers josh tina and my sister <laughs> uh and you for being the best dinosaur see see how good this game is this game's great oh i love this game i'm wonderful god what kind of genius made this game me the best so okay dinosaur. let's play with confetti mode this is confetti mode confetti mode is awful confetti mode is the most obnoxious thing <laughs> <laughs> oh god, why did I do this? Oh, just listen to that. Oh, it's so annoying. I had this idea at like the very last minute, but I had so much time to polish on this game, it's unreal. Okay, I'm not gonna keep doing that. Um, when I've done that, I kind of just want to play through some of my other games, actually. Because that was fun. Wait, let me turn on the lights in here. It's too dark. Um, I'll play, well, I'll play through Power Struggle. I might as well. While we're here. Um, power Struggle. Where is it? Here we go. Run this game. Okay, let's move it over here. Can you see the whole window? Almost. God. Seriously, mine kicked ass with this title music. God, it's so good. So anyway, uh, yeah, this is Power Struggle. I made this for the latest Ludum Dare. Um, so, oh, I might turn it down a little bit. Can you hear me all right? If you can, I won't turn it down. Uh, I will turn it down because it's in my ear. Um, so, uh, this is a game I dare I had for a very long time. Uh, actually. Um, but... I uh, never really had thought of a good way to implement it. I just always wanted to make a game about a robot. So, okay. If I turn it down like that, is it quieter for you guys? Or am I going to have to fill the setting in the thingy? Um, let me know. Um, so, yeah, I had this idea for a long time about a game where you're a robot whose plug has been ripped out and you need to get batteries to power yourself. It hasn't changed at all. Or it's just fine. Who knows? <laughs> uh, let me just press audio. Let me... Oh, I can't actually... I can turn my mic up, but I can't turn the desktop down. Um, so turn your own dang sound down. That's all I can do. Um, so. Power struggle. Yeah, idea I've had for a while. Um, basically, the theme was 10 seconds for the loom there. And I just said to Martin, hey, can you make me, I'm going to make the game, you're a robot, you collect batteries, I need a sound that has 10 seconds long, and, um, and makes it clear that you're going down a tenth of a battery each second. Um, yeah. So then he sent me the most kick-ass song ever, and then I'm like, oh god, this is amazing, can you do a title screen sound? And then he did this, and this is awesome as well. God, it's so good. I'm so impressed with everything Martin did with it. So, anyway, so this gives you the controls, which um, was like literally last minute thing. Um, what it need, what the game needs a lot is for it to just say R to restart when you die, but I did not have time. Um, so, anyway, you press any of those keys that it says, other than R, which you actually can't press yet. Hot secret. You know, game dev secrets. Um, anyway, if you press any of the keys, Wait, if you've got a uh, window, can you press R? No, you can't press R. Uh, if you're actually in the window and you press a button, then uh, the power runs out and the uh, battery drops from the heavens and you got to use it. 
So the the world is see-through, so you can see the skull when the battery runs out, and it also turns from green to red, and like slowly signs into like darker, which is an effect that I didn't think through. But it also goes through rainbows when you collect the battery, and the screen shake is awesome. Uh, the screen shake uh, is supposed to look like when you hit the gauss on a old TV. It doesn't really look like that, but I like to think it does. Um, so yeah, then, so you know, it starts out and it does no danger to just introduce you to the concepts. And then here, this is where the first, so, you know, to be fair, a lot of people can't get through that first bit. Um, because it's really difficult. Um, just the, the, even these lasers down here. I can't go back anymore, so I'm just just jamming myself through lasers. Um, oh, is a little visual touch that, in retrospect, I should have made a robot that was just a big dinosaur, a big dinosaur, a robot with a big big monitor for a face. Because what I really wanted, all I wanted for the um, visually, was for there to be an O when you were dead and an I when you were alive, like a power like a power thing would have. Um, but anyway, let me restart because I want to show you so so you can move around while the battery's charging. Um, but the lasers are also still active when the battery's charging. But there is a little shortcut. If you just jump through the uh, these three lasers while they're still on then you can you'll fly down as well and get the battery down there. Um which is awesome. That's a that's one of those little speedrunny tricks that I put in. I think that's actually the only one in this game. Because um Ugh. Yeah, I'm too I'm too impatient. You can also get to that one from uh within one battery pop, but uh it's tricky, and it actually doesn't really save you any time. Ugh. I am too impatient. Yeah, you do need to do that trick later to, uh, to finish the game. But, it's, uh... You know, this is before the game's... The game doesn't teach you that. It's just kind of a thing you have to work out. Um, but if you worked it out early, then you got, you know, you save your seconds. Enjoy that, you don't have to. This is too hard. This is way too hard. I should have made the uh, downtime of the lasers a lot longer to make this not obnoxiously difficult. The only reason all those batteries are there um, is because I wanted one battery to be... So the way that this, is, this corridor here is timed is you have enough time just barely to get to that battery up there. But the way this bit's timed is that you have just barely enough time if you start from here. Um, so I just dumped a bunch of batteries in there, um, and that was the way I solved it. Which is inelegant, but I was low on time. I, yeah. Much more so than the best dinosaur, I had no time for all that Um, oh. See? Just barely enough time. Um, you may have noticed um, I was stood in the lasers for a sec at the very last set of lasers. The lasers have a little bit of downtime where they're not active. You can see them, they go from their like lightning -y thing to a like thin, straight thing with no lightning on it. And when it's thin and straight, you won't take any damage from it. It's just like a couple frames, you can tell. Um, yeah, but that's a. Uh, and then this, I was planning on having just a long bit where you just walk straight, but then that didn't work for setting off the switch. Um, so yeah, then you win the game. A uh, fun fact, the sound of the ending music is actually playing over itself twice, because the, <laughs> the programming of this bit here was so shoddy and so last minute, that if you are every frame that you're inside of that switch, you start the music over. So you can do this. Okay. Not recommended.
but yeah, you just uh, jump through that last laser, and that's how you do the game. It's cool. Um, I think I will download some of my other old games because loads of them are awesome. Do do do. Oh, maybe I should just play Rayman Legends. That is what I was gonna do. Um. Let me see. Uh, uh, I'll just play Assage because Assage is an important game. Very important. Um, yeah, so I made Assage for uh, Glorious Trainwrecks, which is a um, oh, I could play Neurosis, but that's a very reedy game. Oh, you can't move this window. Oh, God. Oh, old game maker. <sighs> okay, I'm going to have to move the... Oh, uh, God. Let me... Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, this is not going to work. I'm just gonna struggle against everything here. Okay, wait, let me do that and then do that. And then select region. Acid is pretty good. Acid is pretty funny. Okay, maybe it'll work. Okay. Or have I just... Oh, there we go. Okay. Assage. Made this for Gura Strainrex. Uh, you're supposed to make it in a couple hours. Um, that's the way... It, <laughs> that's the way Gura Strainrex works. So I just made a bunch of games in a row that I thought were funny. This is the first. It's a parody of Passage by Jason Rohrer. You're a little butt and you walk forwards. If you press space, it makes fart noises. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty funny game. <laughs> you get older, you meet a ladybug, <laughs> then you both get old and you get grey, and then she shits herself and dies. <laughs> Oh, and then you shit yourself and die. <laughs> it says Finn. Because <laughs> that's how I feel like art games should end. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm such a dork. That's the stupidest shit. Oh, it's amazing. <sighs> okay. Enough of that. Oh, God. Oh, God, that game's so funny. <sighs> Maybe I will play Neurosis, because I do, I, yeah, that game's pretty good. And it's got shit I want to talk about, because it's problematic in retrospect. It's very problemat problematic in retrospect, um, for a few reasons. And I want to talk about it, you know? I want to talk about it. No, it's not that problematic. It's quite problematic. I don't know. I already downloaded this game again, apparently. I thought about remaking it in Twine so that everybody can play it, but uh, that would be a lot of work, and it's not that important to do. Okay, gonna have to change the settings on this again. Oh, it's just too complicated. Streaming, who'd do it? Okay. And then I press OK here, and then I press OK there, and then I move this around until it fits in the screen. Oh, this is going to be unreadable. Yep, this is going to be totally unreadable. Is that totally unreadable? It seems like it's probably totally unreadable. It's definitely unreadable with this in the way. Oh yeah, that's where my... Um, 
baby butt walk icon is from. Is this unreadable? Let me see. Oh, it's not unreadable at all. This is totally readable. But I can't read the chat while it's open because it takes up too much space and I can't move the window. Um, wait, let me try and pop this chat out, see if that makes it smaller. Oh, it does. Okay, that's wonderful. Is it going to work though? Probably not. Nope, it's not going to work. Oh, that's a bummer. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I'll just have chat open in the background and be unable to read it properly. Okay. So, this is Neurosis. Oh, the capture window is too big. Let me just drag that up a bit. There we go. So, this is Neurosis. It's a work of interactive fiction, which I only wrote that because I thought it would be funny to be, like, kind of a dick about it. Okay, now the chat's broken. Shit. Come on. Come on, Twitch. Okay, let me refresh. 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 Did I just make it more unreadable when I did that? No, now it's just a stream of the stream within the stream. Whoa. Okay, refresh. There we go. Come on. Just want to see the chat. That's all I want. Close these other windows down. <sighs> oh, unable to connect to the chat. Well, I'll just talk through it and, uh, you know, tweet me, I guess. So, Neuroses. I made this for the same thing, Glorious Train Rex. Um, I had this idea on the way home from uni once. Um, and then I made it. It wasn't very difficult. And you'll soon see why. Um, okay, so you press a key and then it says, I'll just read through it, I guess. You are a 20-something. <laughs> Every time I put a number, I decided to put the number uh, written out as a number as well, in brackets. But I fucked up because I did 20-something as the first thing. 2x. Um, 20x. Um, but it doesn't work when you... I haven't already established the joke of doing that. So, uh, you know. You live and you learn. So... You're a 20x male living in a two two bedroom flat in Aberdeen, Scotland. This was true. This was a true fact. You are kind of bummed out. You get out of bed, you go into the living room, your flatmate is there playing a critically acclaimed video game that you have not yet played. Should you tell him a thing you heard on the internet about the critically acclaimed video game you have not yet played? So this is like... Um, this is the epitome of my... It's funny to put words in capital letters thing um, in text adventures. I think it's very, very funny to do that. So I did that a lot in this game. A lot in this game. Um, so if you press yes. Mm. Whoa. Are all my games autobiographical? Asks Tina on Twitter. Uh, probably. Uh, I am a butt that farts and has feelings and walks and shits herself and dies. Um, so, you know, you press yes. Oh, it's a lot of talking. You tell your flatmate the thing you learned on the internet about, the thing you heard on the internet about the critically acclaimed video game that you have not yet played. If your flatmate disagrees, you defend the thing, citing the source as a video, popular video game blog. <laughs> your flatmate scuffs, saying that a popular video game blog commits inappropriate sexual acts. Uh, you say it physically cannot commit <laughs> inappropriate sexual acts. Your flatmate is enraged by your pedantry. Your flatmate grabs a sharp knife. Your flatmate uses the sharp knife to stab you. You have been stabbed. You are dead. Uh, yeah, so that's what happens when you press yes on the first thing. And then it's like, you are dead. You scored zero, zero points. Zero of a possible one points. Oh, and I still think it's funny to say one point. Uh, God, this game's pretty funny. You're dead, you know, and then you start over. And if you press no, and it's like, oh, you're sad that you didn't tell them the thing. Um, you politely agree, even though it doesn't, even though the thing that they said doesn't gel with the thing that you said. You're bummed out. You're kind of bummed out. I wonder if this will be a theme in the game. I wonder. I wonder. It's come up twice. Is it going to come up again? Let's find out together. You go into the kitchen. You're a desirous of coffee. Should you have an extra teaspoon of instant coffee? And of course you say yes, because that's always true. And this is my favourite of the whole thing. This is just absurd. I'm just going to refresh Twitch again because the chat is being weird. I mean, the chat's just not loading, but it's just being strange. 
You have an extra teaspoon of instant coffee. Despite the fact that you're desirous of coffee, this extra teaspoon of instant coffee has proven too much instant coffee. You have trouble concentrating. Your vision starts to swim. You find yourself in the caffeine zone. All around you are coffee golems. One of the coffee golems greets you in a language you do not understand. I did linguistics at uni. Um, man, God, this game is just all me. This game, this game is so like my soul, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, you find yourself in caffeine zone, language you do not understand. You attempt to converse with the coffee golem in English. The coffee golem, golem takes your refusal to speak its native tongue as a personal affront. The personal affront has been communicated to the other, other coffee golems in a language you do not understand. You have caused a diplomatic incident with the denizens of the caffeine zone. The coffee golem king orders your execution through caffeine overdose. You are force-fed delicious coffee beans until your heart explodes. You are dead. Um, in retrospect, should have had your heart has exploded. You are dead. Because that would have been funnier. But anyway, let's start again. No, no, I won't have an extra teaspoon of instant coffee. The weak coffee is bland and lifeless. You remain desirous of coffee. You are kind of bummed out. There's that phrase again. Will it come up again? Oh, I'm in the chat now. Hello. Um, okay, you notice that important kitchen supplies are missing from the kitchen. Vague, I think it's funny to be vague sometimes. I don't know. You decide to go into the outside world to import, to purchase these things from a nearby supermarket. You look, out, you look through your window and see the outside world. The outside world looks cold and unforgiving. You recently purchased a colorful scarf, but you also own a conservative scarf. God damn, I had recently purchased a colourful scarf. Um, Jesus Christ, this game is so ridiculous. Should you wear the recently purchased colourful scarf as opposed to the conservative scarf? Yes, of course, it's lovely. <coughs> you wear it, you're snug, you leave the two-bedroom flat and enter the outside world. A passing stranger spots you <laughs> and your recently purchased colourful scarf. Passing stranger tells you she does not like you recently purchased colourful scarf. Reveal, she reveals her true form, and that's the thing that comes up a lot. And I think it's not as funny as I thought it was when I wrote it a lot uh, about things revealing their true form, and then their true form gets explained. I use it a little bit too much in this game. I don't think it's as funny as I thought I did. I thought it was when I made it. But anyway, fashion blogger informed you your recently purchased colourful scarf is not stylish. Fashion blogger casts a level five scarf a Mancy spell on your recently purchased colourful scarf. I love the I love Manc oh Mancy as a suffix. So uh, you know, that's just one of those. Your colourful scarf constricts around your neck. Fashion blogger sees you struggle and laughs. You suffocate. You are dead. Uh yep. Pretty good. That's one of the good ones. Are you noticing a pattern here, guys? So no, no, no. You do not wear a special colourful scarf, you wear a conservative scarf. You look at your reflection and are disappointed by the uninteresting colour scheme of your wardrobe. You're kind of bummed out. Blah, 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 blah. Passing stranger examines your <laughs> conservative scarf and nods sagely, but says nothing. Which I think is just a funny, weird mystery if you didn't do the death first. But whatever. Um, you start walking towards a nearby super supermarket. You spot an abandoned mattress. The abandoned mattress looks springy. So literally, this is just another thing that happened in my life. So much of this is just shit that happened, for real. There was an abandoned mattress on a nearby road, and I wanted to jump up and down on it. But then my imagination went wild, and I was like, <laughs> you jump up and down on the abandoned mattress. Immediately, thousands of spiders crawl from the abandoned mattress. Thousands of spiders cover your entire body. You are horrified. A neighborhood watch member sees your entire body is covered in thousands of spiders and calls the relevant authorities. You are horrified. Um, yeah, that's funny. The repetition of you are horrified is funny. Uh, the relevant authorities arrive. The relevant authorities are amateur pest exterminators. The amateur pest exterminators see that thousands of spiders cover your entire body. You are horrified. The amateur pest exterminators spray a cloud of rat poison at the thousands of spiders. Uh, I like the thousands of spiders as well. God, I'm pretty funny. Uh, amateur pest exterminator has failed to uphold safety precautions and I like that that comes after they've already sprayed you with rat poison I like this uh, they spray another cloud of rat poison at your entire body that repetition isn't funny should have got rid of that one uh, the thousands of spiders are poisoned by the cloud of rat p 
poison, thousands of spiders are dead. Your entire body is poisoned by the cloud of rat poison. Your entire body is dead. You are dead. That's very funny. That's very good. I really love your entire body is dead. You are dead. I think that's hilarious. This is a wonderful game. I'm a very funny person. Well done me. So no, 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 no. You don't jump in da up and down on your banner mattress. You highly fantasize about how much fun it would have been. You were kind of bummed out. Arrive at the nearby supermarket, infinite aisles. You can't work out which of the infinite aisles contains important kitchen supplies. You see a supermarket employee. Now this one, this one's not very funny. Should you ask the supermarket employee which contains the important kitchen supplies? Um, I'm not even going to read this because it's boring. Um, basically, the supermarket employee transforms into like two or three different forms. One of which is, um, so it's it turns out to be a customer who's dressed in the same clothes as the supermarket employee, and then that customer turns out to be psychopathic and kills you, uh, which I don't like. I don't think that's very funny. I think I wrote it badly. Uh, I think it's a bit rubbish. So fuck that one. Um, but here we go. Let's move on. Uh, all right. This is the bit that gets problematic. Um, if you were wondering, if that's what you were waiting for. Um, I've just got a tweet from Nathan Blades. Let's see what it says. What does it say? What does it say? I am in the chat again, by the way. Um, I can see the chat now. <laughs> My flippant approach to video game writing is remarkably compatible with his, and we should jam. That's true. Your dude, the fucking ah, oh, the goddamn uh, subculture thing. In the, I can't even remember the quote, but it was amazing. The first few things in the pizza apocalypse game made me laugh so much. Anyway, it's not um. Not dwell on that because I'm mumbling. Oh God, I'm tired. Anyway, you should not ask the supermarket employee which of the infinite blah blah. blah. You're kind of bummed out because you can't find the important kitchen supplies. <laughs> In lieu of the important kitchen supplies, you add unnecessary food items to your inventory. This may be, you know, somehow related to how I really shop, but you know, crazy. Uh, in the queue for self-service checkout, again, you know, not that I ever use self-serve at checkout. You spot an attractive girl, you notice the attractive girl has dropped some fair trade vegetables. Should you tell the attractive girl that she dropped some fair trade vegetables? Now, uh, I don't know, whatever. It's already, already I don't like this anymore. But as we move on, it becomes worse. But it also becomes like the best, most hilarious thing I've ever written, so, you know, come see, come sir. So, you press yes. You tell the attractive girl that she drops some fair trade vegetables. You mumble slightly, but the attractive girl finds this endearing. Your eyes sparkle. You ask the attractive girl if she is doing anything like her. The attractive girl is not doing anything like her. You organise a date with the attractive girl. You are now dating the attractive girl. You go on a second date with the attractive girl. You go on a third date with the attractive girl. The attractive girl asks if you want to go back to hers. You and the attractive girl go back to hers. You and the attractive girl engage in full play. The attractive girl suddenly bites off your penis. You bleed from your gaping penis wound. The attractive girl reveals her true form. The attractive girl is a succubus. You bleed from your gaping penis wound. You are unhappy with the fact. The succubus bit off your penis. Oh, this is so funny. <laughs> Sekibus apologises but she does not want a relationship with somebody who is unwilling to accept her flaws. You're unwilling to accept her flaws. You bleed from your gaping penis wound. The succubus says, it's not you, it's me. You bleed from your gaping penis wound. Error, you cannot bleed from your gaping penis wound. You have run out of blood. You are dead. Oh god, okay, that's really, really funny. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's funny. It, it's, <laughs> oh, I don't know, succubuses are obviously problematic for many reasons. Um, and this, this whole deal is just a bit of a mess for a few reasons, but that is very, very funny. I still think that's hilarious, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for having written that, because it's the worst shit. So, no, 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 no.
You do not tell the attractive girl that she drops some fair for trade vegetables, you sigh, you are kind of bummed out, you purchase your necessary food items, you leave a ne the nearby supermarket and enter the outside world. <laughs> you think of a roughly 140, brackets 140, character witticism, should you attempt to tweet the roughly 140 character witticism? Yes, of course. Um, so the only problem with this one is because I had committed to writing out words and then writing out numbers, it um, it's a bit difficult to pass, but this is very funny to me. Oh, you attempt to tweet the roughly 140 character witticism. Roughly 140 character witticism has been identified. Roughly 140 character witticism is a 147 character witticism. You use remove characters on the 147 character witticism. I love this because it's so stupid. It's just terrible RPG language. I fucking love it. Remove characters was successful. The 147 character witticism is now 145 character witticism. Use the remove characters on the 145 character witticism. <sighs> remove characters was unsuccessful. You use remove characters on the 145 character witticism. You are hit by a bus to remove characters. <laughs> Instead of observing basic road safety, you are dead. Oh, God. Yeah, this game's pretty great. Um, so then, if you press no on that, you do not attempt to tweet the roughly 140 character witticism. You consider the roughly 140 character witticism. You think the roughly 140 character witticism would have earned you multiple retweets. You are kind of bummed out. You make your way back to the two bedroom flat. You have successfully survived the outside world. You have earned one point. You have won. And then, you know, the very clever lesson in case you didn't get it. Congratulations, you have won. You have earned one point of a possible one point. Unfortunately, <laughs> you are still kind of bummed out. Instead of obsessing over possible negative consequences, perhaps you should take a risk every once in a while. Ignore your nagging neuroses and do what your heart desires. It's not like people die from taking small, inconsequential risks. Press any key to start again. This is... This is a really good game. This is really funny. I forgot how funny this game is. I, um... I actually showed this game to my flatmate and I had to apologise for um, implying that he would stab me with a knife. Um, but yeah, the uh, definitely the succubus passage is the... The succubus passage is really good. The um, the coffee, caffeine zone passage is really good. I like the caffeine zone one because it's really evocative uh, and really just weird. And I like the fashion blog. I like a lot about this game. It, it has problems. I would probably, I probably should remake this game. I guess, in Twine, so it's more playable to more people. But I don't know. Maybe one day. God. If you're unwilling to accept our flaws, it's very funny. It is. Fun. <laughs> it's funny. God. Yeah. Yeah. This game's pretty good. So, well, yeah, I'm, I'm already doing this, so I might as well just do more. I'll do, um, uh, where is it? It's, uh, Time Demon vs. Indie Coffee is the first game I made for this thing. This, uh, the Glorious Trainwrecks game jam. Uh, it's called Slowwalkers.exe. Um, that's because it's really about slow walkers. So, um, or this, uh, yeah, this and Asage and Ponghag.exe, which is boring to watch, so I won't show you. Um, all of them, instead of like actually doing anything, any proper like level design or like anything, I just put these screens in the start so you could tell what to do, and it just very, uh, explicitly explained what it is but I thought it was, it was uh, cute because I just did it in uh, this was all done with a mouse obviously as you can tell this is roughly what my handwriting looks like to be fair um, anyway beware the time demon if he touches you you will be late and love is over if you bump into the slow walkers too many times they will stop moving and doom you uh, yeah get to your date at indie coffee push right and then you know you got to push right to begin if you don't push right, you don't start. And if you push right, then the game goes, and you're already moving, and you understand what's happening, because it explained. Um, the background loops. 
background makes very quickly. Uh, buckets and kittens shop, food co that just sells a tomato. <laughs> so it's, there's a sandcastle in the bucket and kitten. Tomato, a carrot, a burger, and ice cream. Office block, which is just all caps. Um, if you bump into them three times, then they get so angry that they stop, and then you get killed. Well, you don't. No, time up. Love is over. Um, God. And yeah, and there's the homeless guy and the uh, fly-ridden dog. Uh, yeah, and I like how Office Block is all one font, all big letters. Ah, oh, this game's so silly. And yeah, the like skull particles that come with the time wave. Um, this game is basically explicitly... Uh, not explicitly. Basically entirely a rip-off of one WarioWare game where you're a penguin and you have to walk between other bigger penguins. Um, so basically this gap gets smaller and smaller and you can... You can get you can get to the end but there's no indication that there is an ending because the background just loops. But it is totally possible. And also by this time, if you if you enter the slow walkers at this point, you'll probably get killed anyway because you stop for a second. They also slow down and speed up a little bit, which means that you can't just, you it's a bit more difficult to get into a rhythm, which was deliberate. Oh God, there we go, Indie Coffee, you made it. Love is not over. Um, yeah, I like that one, it's a bit cute. Um, yeah, uh, Tina says she she's never seen the end of the game. Yeah, it's not clear that there is an end to the game. I after I finished it, I thought about putting in a um, that I should have probably put in a counter that said X distance till indie coffee, just so that people knew that there was an ending to it. Um, but I didn't, so you know there that is. Um, um, I'll show the game I made about Twitter because they did a they did a thing about branding strategies about you know the ways that you were allowed to use their logo and I got really angry for really stupid reasons I just got pissed off um, so I game to express my rage because I'm a mature, mature person. Um, is this looking good in the thing? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> welcome newly hired Twitter intern. It is your duty to ensure the branding values of Twitter Corporation are upheld. Use your mouse to control the branding standards weapon. Destroy all off-brand symbols of disobedience. So yeah, part of the thing was that it couldn't be sat on something. It couldn't be a different color couldn't be talking and it couldn't be at the wrong angle and ensure that messages which are on uh, ensure that images which are on message survive and yeah you're just a little twitter logo and you just click to destroy these things and you just go it makes a ding noise if you hit a good one and a bad noise if you hit a bad one god this game's terrible this game is so stupid. I was just like angry for no reason. Oh. Oh. But to be fair, if this game never existed, then confetti mode would never exist because this is how I work out how to make things rotate and change color in um, Game Maker. God, this is so stupid. Why did I... why... I'm like, yeah, there's no real, like, negatives for missing stuff. <laughs> An extremely off-brand monstrosity approaching. <laughs> this is still so funny to me. <laughs> You defeated the monstrosity. Twitter's brand is safe again. You destroyed 17 disgusting off-brand birds. You can also keep destroying the on-brand birds. Uh, 
you saved 87 accurate symbols of our corporate mastery. Press any key to play again. God, I'm so immature. I don't know how to discuss things without making a stupid game about it. Okay, one more. Because um, <laughs> I actually really love this game. So this is this is a game for uh, a Glorious Train X event which was called Consider Enslaved Wrangler Adult Females Overshoes. And literally the only, uh, you can't really see it properly, but the only description for what this game jam was, was impromptu spam bot game jam, and it just had verbatim the text that some spam bot had jammed in the comments. So what I did is I just took a bunch of quotes from it that sounded like they could be things in games, and then just made it into a game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's really silly. It's called Woman Wide Wide Lace Top Moving Up With Chucker Footwear. Which is obviously something I've memorised. <laughs> I really like this game. Everyone hates this game. Because um, it doesn't make any sense and it's not very really good. Um, I'll need to expand the window, I think. Let me just see. The stream is a bit delayed. Doop -de doo uh, yeah, well, uh, it's readable, but it's, you know, you want to you wanna get all of this game. Because otherwise, have we... Oh, God, this is going to be a nightmare. Select region. Doobie doo boo. Doobie doo boo boo. Okay. And then I just expand it up. Okay. Totally readable. Right, let me restart the game. So, the entire completely has an objective to produce the company's, your targeted visitor's real artisanship. So literally I just picked this because it had objective in it. Um, I wanted it to look like a boot was giving you instructions, but it was kind of like in a like shadowy something something. I don't know. I wanted to like evoke more story than there was. After the out of date great outdoors western tradition, the entire boots was established to reach the knees. <laughs> Four mafias with tights for the final horseback ride-on type. And um, this is like, the, you know, the whole premise of the game. That you've got a four mafias with tights for the final back horseback ride-on type. Wrangler shoes or boots are successful in many countries. So I decided, based on these quotes, to make a game where you're a Wrangler shoe. And you have to herd horses. Because you're a Wrangler, you have to herd horses made of tights. The four mafias for the final horseback ride on type. Obviously. So, so yeah, this is again kind of just entirely based on a warrior by game. But anyway, uh, you're this boot that moves around. You animate quicker when you when you just follow the mouse, and you animate quicker when you move further away from the thing, which was I was very proud of. Um, so the product quality butt skin. Buckskin UPPR utilizing form is set off sewing explain is a catcher from a increasingly simple really actually and again this is just a quote that I just used because it said catcher so that you would know that this is the area that you catch the things in and then woman wide wide lace top moving up with chucker footwear include the hallmark wrangler logos <laughs> your internet calf um, and then yeah because it had calf in it this is the area where the cows are the cows made of <laughs> made of tights that you have to herd into the, uh, God, you have to herd into the thing. And basically they just walk around randomly, and if you, like, you know, get close enough to them, then they walk quickly away from you, and you want to wrangle them into the gap, and then they'll be calm in the catcher area. And this is the entire game part of the game. Um... <laughs> God, it's silly. Um, and then, you know, this is my first cutscene ever that I made. The foot footwear develop a leather-based bloodstream. Some plastic pure. Oh, too too quick. That was that was actually my favourite thing in the whole thing. Leather-based bloodstream. I thought that was really evocative. Um, and then, yeah. 
now now you've completed your goal and there are all these boots the mafia boots I guess that are riding on horseback it has reproduced it physical appearance higher quality attempting and trendy and you've won I really think this game's so funny I think this game's so ridiculous I love this game I don't care people do hate that game people are actually angry at that game but I think it's wonderful I think it's I think it's fantastic uh, for a bunch of reasons um, yeah yeah it's really cool um, alright I'm done I'm done with this I'm tired and my throat hurts and I want to play Saints Row 